Welcome back to Gruber Motor Company. I'm Pete Gruber, and today we're going to show you the custom equipment that we have to evolve and develop in order to work on these first generation Teslas, the Tesla Roadster. Um, for example, this 1,000 pound battery pack that we have pulled out of this car has a number of battery sheets, and then there is what's called a DC to DC converter. Its function in life is to take the 400 volts DC in the main propulsion battery and scale it down to 12 volts DC for all of the rest of the stuff that's in the car, from audio to locks to headlights, anything that runs off 12 volts. So in order to fix this box, and the reason we have to repair them is these are no longer in production have not been in production since 2008, and the only hope of keeping a car alive and keeping these, this type of equipment running is to repair it right down to component level. So we end up building a lot of equipment to work on this, these types of products in the Tesla Roadster. And before we go in the lab, here's a good example. This is a battery sheet cart, which now makes it safe to move this cart around. And what we're doing here is analyzing which cell is defective in this car or in this pack so that it can drive again. So let's go in the lab and I'll show you what kind of equipment we end up building. So the DC to DC converter that we saw out there inside that Roadster battery pack looks like this on the bench. And there were two versions. There was a MarTech and a Delta. The first one was considered uh, inferior, so there was a later version that evolved. But as you can see, there are a lot of components in this box. And uh, in order to repair it, we need test equipment and we need power supplies in order to simulate what that giant thousand pound battery pack in the Tesla Roadster is doing. To simulate that 400 volt power supply, we build things like this. First of all, I want to mention that uh, the majority of components that you see here are recycled. And they came from the critical power world inside uninterruptible power supplies. This transformer, for example, is a 120 to 480 transformer that normally resides in an uninterruptible power system that has a 480 volt input. It then steps down the voltage to 120 volts for all of the instrumentation and the um, components that use 120 volts in the UPS. What we're doing is actually feeding this backwards and we're injecting from zero to 130 volts AC with this Variac. This was a purchase off Craigslist, by the way. And what this device does is it allows you to go from zero to 130 volts AC feeding it into a transformer that has been reversed that is now putting out up to five to 600 volts on the output side. That high voltage then simulates what's in the battery pack feeding that DC to DC converter, but it's AC. So what we do then is we feed all of that AC that's coming out into a full wave bridge rectifier and if you can come around here, we can see these devices and I'll point to them as we... Uh... So we've got about five to 600 volts AC that goes into this full wave bridge rectifier that then converts all that AC to DC. From there, it goes into electrolytic capacitors, which are designed to filter the DC voltage. We have a choke on the side here and we have some load resistors that help bleed off the charge after it's been powered up. And then the final thing is it runs to a meter, which then shows us what the voltage is. So let's actually fire this up and show you how this works. Now here you can probably fast forward if you want to, or not. All right. We are now at zero volts on the Variac. There's a slight residual DC voltage. This, um, uh, this small AC adapter here was inserted to feed not only the panel meter, but these meters so that we don't have to change batteries on them. Uh, for now, what we're going to do is just simply let the batteries run because they haven't been hooked up yet to the, uh, uh, to the DC input. So if you observe this meter now, I'm going to start cranking up this Variac with 10 volts on the input side. 
it's on the 120 volt side of this transformer, we're already at 57 volts DC. And as we go up, we're at 30 volts input, we've got 146 volts DC. And as we continue to crank, you can see that the voltage here begins to increase. We're already at 400 volts. And that is the voltage that we're seeking in order to simulate the DC voltage off the propulsion main battery pack. Now, if we had devices that needed more than 400 volts, this uh, device or this piece of, um, or this power supply is actually capable of giving us over 600 volts DC. So I'm gonna crank this back down <clears throat> and you can see the decay on this is fairly slow. That's what the load resistors here are doing. They're actually uh, bleeding off that charge. When we use this, it will be used in two different applications. One is to trickle charge a roadster that has been bricked. And <clears throat> because it's able to put out up to 400 volts, that will be running through these meters where we can check the voltage and the amount of current that we're inserting, which we want to regulate when we're doing a recovery. The second way this will be used is directly into a APS unit or DC to DC converter in the Tesla Roadster so that we can simulate high amperage 400 volt DC input to test the 12 volt outputs on this DC to DC converter to allow us to troubleshoot and simulate how the car is using this APS unit or DC to DC converter. To give you an example, the previous power supply we were using were these small 400 volt power supplies, which is only good for one amp. This larger DC power supply is going to uh, be good for at least 20 amps on the 400 volt side. So we've got plenty of power to spare. Thank you for joining us for this technical portion of the How We Repair Early Tesla presentation. I'm Pete Gruber. Make sure to check us out on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. Thank you.